Hello, welcome. Today and the rest of this week, we're all talking all about attitude, conflict conversations, and how to not have a fight. Okay. Maybe you were here yesterday, maybe you watched the replay. Hello, coming in. All right. Here we go. So, for those of you who weren't here on the on the last call or who haven't caught up on the replay yet, I'm going to do a quick recap of what we're covering in these calls. So, we are looking at all things to do with conflict, conflict conversations. And um, I'm going to let you into a, an annoying secret. If you haven't, don't know already, conflict is an inevitable part of adulting. It's annoying, but it's unavoidable. So the trick is to learn how to do it really well. And this is what this series of videos is all about. How to do conflict conversations without it being a winners and losers game. All right. So uh, this is video number two in a five part series. So do make sure that if you haven't watched the first one, you catch up because there's some amazing content in there that explains about the conflict types. So knowing your conflict type and your conflict restore strategy, super important. So go and catch up on that before you come into this one. Um, it'll make a lot more sense if you do them sequentially. Um, and um, this, uh, what we're looking at is really how to heal broken relationships in your life. And by relationship, I mean in any area of your life. So it might be with friends, family, colleagues, partners. Um, it can be with any person in your life. Okay, we'll be looking at exploring um, how to have the conversation if you're a, if you're a conflict avoider. And also how to put down your sword and not go into combat straight away if you're a flamethrower. So, um, yes, that's what we're looking at today. And today's session is all about finding the, the right time for the chat. Um, let me know if you're with me, if that makes total sense. You're like, oh, yeah, there's never the right time. I just couldn't find the right time. So I haven't spoken to them again. Um Yes, maybe this is familiar to you. So this is what we're looking at today is how to create the right time for a conversation that is challenging, that may have conflict in it, where the relationship is broken in some way. And that's what we're going to look at. So first, let's bust a myth. The, um, the thing about the right time, uh, a lot of people say to me, I just, I just, you know, couldn't find the right time for the chat. Um, there is, the myth is that there's no right time to have a difficult conversation. And my view is that there is a right time, but you've got to create the right time. Okay. And um, creating the right time is very different to just walking up to them and bringing up the conversation. It ain't that. It is. The fact is that the right time is when you both feel ready, ready enough to listen and also feel, feel, you feel that your brain is, they feel that their brain is prepared to hear the feedback that you want to give them. Okay. So you both feel ready to have the conversation or ready enough to have the conversation and to listen. And their brain is prepared for your feedback. Okay. So what does it look like if you're trying to do that as a way of starting one of these conversations? So the pitfall here, there's three main pitfalls. One is that you just march up to them and you're like, oh, you, I want to talk to you about this thing you did yesterday that really upset me. Um, so you just like march up and raise up the issue. That's pitfall number one. I'm telling you now, they weren't ready. They're going to get defensive instantly and you're going to not have a great interaction. Um, another one is not checking when the right time might be. So you're like, I want to talk to you tonight. Hands up if you've ever done this. I know I have. I want to talk to you tonight about this thing. And they're like, oh, I had other plans this evening. Well, it's really important. So we need to talk about it tonight. <laughs> so you push the issue. Um, you haven't checked to find whether when is the right time for them to be receptive and present. And um, 
either of those strategies creates the third pitfall, which is you've not prepared, you've not prepared their brain and their nervous system for this type of conversation. And the beauty of preparing their brain and their nervous system for the conversation that you want to have because you've got a break in the relationship there and you want to sort something out is that when you do that, they're empowered to have the conversation, which means it goes better. Okay. So the first, the main thing to take away from, from today's session is to always... Always, always, always seek a micro yes. What I mean by a micro yes is that you've checked in that they are willing to go into this conversation at some unyet determined time, but that they recognize that the relationship has got tension in it, that it's broken in some way, and, um, and that they are willing to find a time to have this conversation. So you haven't even gone into the topic yet. You haven't raised the issue as such. You've just gone, something's not right. Can we talk about it? When would be a good time? That's kind of the vibe of the micro yes. And they go, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, feeling a bit tense, feeling a bit weird. And that's cool. But at least they're now starting to be prepared. And they have chance to prepare themselves for a time that they are coming to that is mutually agreed. And so you're both more empowered to have that conversation. So this prepares their brain. And it creates that moment of buy in that you want from them to be willing to be there, the maximum potential for willingness for them to be in that interaction with you, especially if it's very tense. And the other person has um, an option to say yes or no. So they are feeling a, an autonomy into being involved in this conversation rather than you've hoiked them in against their will and now they're cross that they're there. Right. And I, I laugh because I've done all these things. Right. Um, I, I the, the process I'm teaching you this week is something that I rely on and I use all the time in my own conflict conversations. Like I said to you, conflict is an inev an inevitable part of adulting in some area of your life, it might be only at work. Maybe it's just with your siblings because siblings, you know, it's or it's with your partner and you're having a difficult time. Like there will be conflict conversations in your life. This is a fact of adulting. So I've done all these things, but now I know how to do these, uh, do it in a different way. I rely on this structure so much. So it's, it's a game changer. And the micro yes, I think was one of the, it's probably the piece that made the most difference to the way that my conflict conversations went. I never assumed I could just have the chat. I may always now make sure that we're finding the time that is mutually beneficial for maximum willingness to participate. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a wee story. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good story. So um, my collaborator and I, Edith, and um, we've been working together for five years and we don't often have disagreements. We don't often even fall out. But when we do, my God, it's next level. It's like friendship shattering fallouts. The beauty is that they don't often last very long because we have this structure, because we know how to use the tools, we know what our conflict types are. And so we're able to come back quite quickly. But um, they are major, major fallouts. So let me tell you about one of them that happened quite recently. Um, <laughs> so I am a, um, I am a righteous type. And um, that means that I sit on a high horse and she is a flamethrower type, which means that she just goes into combat all everything blazing um, as soon as she's in her conflict type. OK, so we've got different conflict types. And recently we had this really big row and um, it could have ended us working together. It really was 
for the few hours that we were in it, it was proper touch and go. And when we were finally both feeling ready to chat, she'd shifted out of her blocked ears um, and her conflict type. And the conflict is to have a, like, chuck everything, chuck everything out the pram and then slam the door in the face and walk off. So that's the conflict. That's her conflict type. And my conflict type was I'm up on my high horse and she's like such an idiot. Okay. So that's where we were. It was really bad. And um, we shifted out of our winners and losers mindset, which is the the story that we tend to go into because it's the one we've been taught historically and socially and um, hierarchically, either by the parent-child dynamic or by the uh, the work environment, um, the hierarchy that turns up in professional life. So there's loads of ways in which we're taught that it's a battle of winners and losers and it's a power struggle um, and it's just not the case. So anyway, we shifted out of our winners and losers mindset and thankfully we were both able to return to a co-creative and gener- generative place and even come back stronger than we were before. So The reality is that conflict conversations tend to go bad because of two main things. Winners lose a mindset and block tears mentality. Okay, so if you can shift out the winner loses mindset and reopen your ears to listening to find out where the misunderstanding is, you are already making massive shifts in how the conflict conversation is going to go. So it turned out that there was a huge misunderstanding at the centre of our um, fallout basically and it was dramatic so dramatic because it plucked at the core value of trust basically trust had broken down completely which is why our work together going forward was so so threatened and um and what had happened is that I was operating on a previous agreement that I thought was still relevant and Edith had felt completely betrayed by me because I didn't check in with her before making a big decision about public access to our work. And so in the space of um, a matter of a few messages back and forth, we had gone... But... Her restore strategy as a as a flamethrower is to recenter, right? As we discussed in the last video. So she was able to take the time to recenter herself until she was recentered. There's no way that she could even enter any sort of dialogue. And I knew that about her because I know her conflict type. So I know that her restore strategy is to recenter. And so that enabled me to tap into my restore strategy as a righteous type, which is to um, tap into my innate empathy. And so by going, ah, okay, she's in her conflict type really hard right now. She needs to recenter before she can come back in. And then that I'm tapping into my empathy and going, ah, yeah. And this is all the time. I've still got like my massive conflict story going on, which is she's such an idiot. How could she? No, 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 no. But I'm slowly, step by step, coming back to empathy and imagining why she might be upset, imagining from her side, what might this look like? And eventually we were able to come back together. And within an hour, once we'd found the right time, she messaged me and said, I'm ready to talk. When would be a good time? And I, we found a time. We got our micro yes and boom, we dropped in. We started our dialogue. And in the space of an hour, we dissected the conflict. I had admitted that I had not thought things through sufficiently. And Edith had admitted that she had reacted too quickly and not found out enough of the story. And so we had come to a new agreement about our partnership that we both felt really excited about. And halfway through, we were already laughing again. And honestly, I, th- I thought it might have been the end. So that shows you how knowing our own conflict types and knowing each other's conflict types really helped us to find a way to navigate a very, very difficult conversation relatively quickly. And so 
I'm going to, I want to um, invite you to try this. Okay. So here's some suggestions on how you might go about getting a micro yes. So seek, seeking a micro yes before you do anything else uh, might look like taking a uh, five to 15 minutes to just prepare yourself. Maybe you might go for a walk, meditate, listen to a piece of music really like, do some breath work, but you're gonna, if you've got something in your system that's making you um, disordered in some way, so you're a bit fluttery or tense or anxious, um, take some time, do something you know settles you, and then approach this person with curiosity and openness as genuinely as you possibly can. You want to have this conversation. You want it to go well. And you need a micro yes before you can have it. So you're seeking a micro yes, okay? You're not raising the issue at this point. I cannot say that strongly enough, that you're really not raising the issue. You might name the issue or name the time so that they're oriented to what you might want to talk about but you're not bringing it up and you're preparing their brain for feedback and empowering them to be ready to have this tricky conversation. So then let the person know there is an issue that you'd like to discuss. And at that point, you're only finding out one that they recognize that there is a break in the healthy relationship. There is an issue and two that they are willing to talk about it. Okay. If one of those things isn't there, it can be quite difficult to move forward. So you want to kind of check in on whether they recognize that there is something wrong in the dynamic, that there is a tension in the room or, yeah, it has felt a bit off for a while or something like that, and that they're willing to talk about it. You know, would you be willing to have a conversation about it? Or I really care about our relationship. Um, so I'd really like to find some time. And then you move on to the time piece, which was, can we can we find a time um, when would work for you? Um, yeah, that's the that's the sort of flow of events, if you like. So here's some prompts that you can try more specifically. And if you're signaling um, understanding, you would you might try something like, I feel like there's something between us at the moment. Our relationship is really important to me. That's why I'd love to share my perspective and hear what's going on for you right now. Would you be up for that? And they go, yeah. Yes, I've got the micro, yes. Cool, next, find a time. Or signaling that you care. I'd love to talk to you about what happened yesterday. Our relationship is really important to me. Could we have a conversation about it soon? When would work for you? So in that example, I'm signaling that something happened yesterday that we will both remember. There was a there was a disruption to our relationship. And I'm signaling that I want to talk about that specifically and when would be a good time. All right. So then the main thing is tread lightly here. You're not having the conversation you are preparing them to be the most ready possible for the interaction. You're preparing their brain and you're preparing their nervous system. So they don't go into fight flight while they're talking to you. <laughs> uh, they know what's coming. And so I'd say get the micro yes, empower them to be ready to have the conversation and make sure that you're both on the same page as to roughly what you're going to talk about yeah and so that's it really that's the micro yes part which is the first part of this of this structure and it is an absolute game changer by checking in you're changing the whole dynamic you're saying i respect you i'm not here to undermine you i'm not trying to trick you these are all the things that are signaled by how you get the micro yes. They feel empowered. They feel um, that you care. All of these things, just by this one act, come about. And it's just so special. So that's it for the micro yes today. And tomorrow we're going to look at the secret to communicating what needs to change. Um, 
in in uh, in a nutshell, it's the difference between personally attacking somebody and being really specific about behavior and its effect. So rather than going like you're such a no 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 no, you're gonna go when this happens, I experience this. Can we do something about that? And it's a very 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 different way of raising the issue. You're getting as specific as possible, and that's what I'm gonna teach you how to do tomorrow. Um, and just in case you missed the last two challenges that we've had so far, we had um, all about dating conversations and how to live a more erotic life. Erotic being curious, playful and imaginative. And um, also did a whole series on small talk. So how to chat to anybody, anytime, anywhere. New people, old people, anybody in your life. Go deeper into conversations or just start new, new conversations with new people. So go and check those out. They're on the IGTV. You can have a look in the archive. And um, let me know what themes you want covered in these little mini series that I'm doing. So, um, yeah, as I said, we've had dating conversations and small talk with new people covered so far. We're doing conflict now. What else do you want covered in these conversations? Pop it on the post um, and pop it in the comments and I'll create that. Yeah, any questions, pop onto the replay and drop the questions in the um, in the comments or you can DM me directly and I'll find a way to answer that question for you. Fantastic. Thanks so much for attending live. Thanks so much for watching the replay. And I'll see you tomorrow for getting really specific on the behavior, the thing that needs to change and how to raise it up. All right, go well, you beauties. And I'll catch you anon, hopefully tomorrow. And I'm going to play our amazing record, Attitude, <laughs> in the meantime, to see us out. Attitude. Bye, goodbye. Attitude. Attitude.